Hello children, how have you been doing on your study calendar? Great. So, do you have any interest or do you practice sports like football, volleyball, kabaddi, swimming, etc? Well, have you heard of mountaineering? Climbing mountains is not an easy task and it requires much discipline and determination. Well, Climbing mountains is not easy and mountaineering is a highly disciplined and structured sport which requires enormous physical strength. Interesting, isn't it? So today we will be discussing about the experiences of Major H.P.S. Aluwalia who was a member of the first Indian expedition to Mount Everest in the year 1965. What is a summit? The highest peak of a mountain is called a summit. While talking about the summit outside in the physical world, namely of Mount Everest and other peaks, the writer here makes an analogy to the summit within us, namely the mind. The summit outside, namely Mount Everest and other peaks as I already told you, may be covered by snow and harsh weather, but the summit within us is full of anger, fear, loss of hope and the like. I quote from the text, Of all the emotions which surged through me as I stood on the summit of Everest, looking over miles of panorama below us, the dominant one I think was humility. The physical in me seemed to say, Thank God it's all over. However, instead of being jubilant, there was a tinge of sadness. The experience changes you completely. The man who has been to the mountains is never the same again. Reminisces about the overwhelming journey that he undertook in the year 1965. Although he was successful in conquering or reaching the summit, after having reached the summit or conquered rather, the body being exhausted seems to say, Thank God the ordeal is over, but the heart is sad. This is what we call a bittersweet moment. Children, I want you to make a note of the word bittersweet. Bittersweet, it means both pleasant and painful. This experience of a lifetime changes you forever, says the writer. Major Aluwalia explains about how he worked to conquer the summit within. I quote from the text, I began asking myself the question, why I had climbed Everest? Why the act of reaching the summit has such a hold on my imagination? With every passing day, it would become more remote. Would my memories fade slowly away? All these led the author to question himself about why he was so interested in climbing mountains or rather why people would like to climb mountains. Let me tell you, since his childhood, the writer was attracted by mountains. Whenever he wasn't near them, he would feel very sad. He would become miserable when he was away from them. He says, mountains are nature at its best with splendid beauty and a majestic appearance. Climbing its summit is no less than experiencing a spiritual fulfillment along with physical and emotional fulfillments. It creates a connection with a supreme power. Man faces many obstacles in life, all of us do, but there is no reason for you to sit and crib about it. We do not have to be worried all the time. These obstacles can surely be conquered by us and we can move on to newer paths. When this happens, we get a fuller knowledge of ourselves. We realize who we are. The author adds that the task or goal of climbing which is in front of him helps him or rather inspires him to face the difficulties of life with grit and determination. The next question would be, why Mount Everest? Why not Kanchanjunga or other smaller and less dangerous peaks? 
while Everest being the highest and mightiest and having resisted previous climbing attempts, consumes a climber's last ounce of energy. What can be more challenging than this? The struggle between rock, ice, harsh weather and moving along with heavy equipment is a pretty fatal one. You cannot return midway as it may cost you your life. The journey backwards is as tough as the onward one. Learning to survive odds is what it teaches. Reaching the summit is an exhilarating experience. An experience of having won a battle. Children, I want you to note the word exhilarating. Exhilarating. It means making one feel very happy, animated or elated, thrilling. According to the author, a glimpse of any other peak transports him to a different world where an internal change is about to occur which is nothing less than being spiritual, where an internal change that occurs is nothing less than being mystical. Now Major Ahluwalia hasn't completely explained about why he chose Mount Everest for his maiden expedition. I quote from the text. Why I climbed Everest? It is like answering a question, why you breathe? Why you help your neighbor? Why do you want to do good acts? There is no final answer possible. From this, he goes on to say that this is not just a physical climb, but it makes every individual realize his smallness in the universe. There are phases to a certain this climbing experience. A. Physical B. Emotional C. Spiritual Two climbers share a rope. While one cuts the steps on hard ice, the other inches his way up. The climbing is very difficult and grim. Many climbers and mountaineers in the past have recorded and spoken about the help that they have got from their fellow climbers. The help that they have got from their fellow climbers, which is very crucial to reach the peak. Which is very crucial in reaching the summit. Moving on to the emotional phase, it is said to be quite turbulent as one may ask oneself questions like, why did I have to do this in the first place? Can't I go back? And he even curses himself for having got into this. It is at this moment that you realize its worth and do not want to go back and do not want to give up the struggle. I quote from the text. Your companion keeps up with you, just another 50 feet or a hundred maybe. You ask yourself, is there no end? You look at your companion and he looks at you. You draw inspiration from each other. And then, without first being aware of it, you are at the summit. Amazing, isn't it? Well, now after reaching the summit, when he looks around, all the other peaks, which are silvery in color, look like jeweled necklaces around the summit. The most important phase is the spiritual. The moment you reach the summit and look down around you, is when you take a moment to bow down to the God you worship. Major left a picture of Guru Nanak. His friend Rawat kept a picture of Goddess Durga. Fudorji left a relic of the Buddha and it is said that Edmund Hillary buried a cross under the cairn. Children, I want you to make a note of the word cairn. C-A-I-R-N A small pile of stones made especially on mountains to mark a place or as a memorial, an object to make people remember someone or something. Now moving on, the author stresses about trying to conquer the summit within us. As I've already told you in the beginning, the summit within us is filled with fear, hopelessness, anger, hesitation, doubt, etc. No one can conquer it for us. 
we have to do it ourselves. The physical act of climbing is very similar to climbing the summit within. I quote again, whether the mountain you climb is physical or emotional and spiritual, the climb will certainly change you. It teaches you much about the world and about yourself. Major Aluwalia opines that his experience as an Everester has made him face many an obstacle with complete grit and resolution. He concludes by stating that our internal summits are higher and tougher to climb. He concludes by stating that the summit within us is higher than Mount Everest and tougher to climb. Children, I hope you have understood this unit. Now let us move on to comprehension. Children, now we shall work on a few exercises. Beginning with comprehension check. Question 1. Standing on Everest, the writer was Option 1. Overjoyed Option 2. Very sad Option 3. Jubilant and sad You have to choose the right item. The answer is Jubilant and sad Question 2. The emotion that gripped him was one of Option 1. Victory over hurdles. Option 2. Humility and a sense of smallness. Option 3. Greatness and self-importance. Option 4. Joy of discovery. The answer is humility and a sense of smallness. In the third question, you have to mark the item or items that are not relevant. The summit of the mind refers to Option 1. Great intellectual achievements Option 2. The process of maturing mentally and spiritually Option 3. Overcoming personal ambition for common welfare Option 4. Living in the world of thought and imagination. Option 5. The triumph of mind over worldly pleasures for a noble cause. Option 6. A fuller knowledge of oneself. The answers are Option 1. Great intellectual achievements. Option 5. The triumph of mind over worldly pleasures for a noble cause. The next part is working with the text. You have to answer the following questions. There are seven in all. I will help you with two. Question number one. What are the three qualities that played a major role in the author's climb? The answer is... The three qualities that played a major role in the author's climb include A. Physical quality B. Emotional quality and C. Spiritual quality Question number 3 What was it about Mount Everest that the author found irresistible? Answer The qualities of Mount Everest that the author finds irresistible include its beauty, aloofness, might, ruggedness and the difficulties encountered on the way. The second exercise under this topic is for you to write a sentence against each of the following statements. Your sentence should explain the statement you can pick out sentences from the text and rewrite them. The first one has been done for you. Question 1. The experience changes you completely. And the sentence that goes with this statement. One who has been to the mountains is never the same again. Question number 3. 
Mountains are nature at its best. The sentence explaining the statement would be Their beauty and majesty pose a great challenge and are a means of communion with God. You may do the rest of the questions. The next topic is working with language. Fill in the blanks in the following dialogues choosing suitable phrases from those given in the box. There are five phrases that have been given to you. I will help you complete the first two dialogues. Question 1. Teacher, you were away from school without permission. Go to the principal dash and submit your explanation. Pupil, yes madam, but would you help me write it first? The answer is at once. Question number two. Arun, are you unwell? Ila, no, not dash. Why do you ask? Arun, if you were unwell, I would send you to my uncle. He is a doctor. Answer, at all. The next question is where you have to write the noun forms of the given words by adding the suffix ANCE or ENCE -E to each. I will help you with three words. Question 1. Endure. The noun form endurance with the suffix ANCE. Confide. Noun form Confidence with the suffix ENCE. -E. Abhor. Noun form Abhorrence with the suffix RENCE. -E. The next exercise is where you have to match words under column A with their meanings under column B. There are five words given to you remote. Means, dominant, formidable, overwhelmed. Now, you have to match these words with their meanings. I will help you with two. Remote, it means far away from. Dominant, most prominent. Now, you have to fill in the blanks in the sentences given below with the appropriate words from under column A. I shall help you with two sentences. Question A. There were dash obstacles on the way, but we reached our destination safely. What do you think the answer is? Good answer. Formidable, which means difficult to overcome. Question B. We have no dash of finding out what happened there? Can you guess the answer? Answer means. The meaning of this would be method or methods. Now I hope you can do the rest. The last part of our exercise would be with regard to speaking and writing. Now you have to write a composition about your experience of a visit to the hills or any place which you found beautiful and inspiring. Before you begin writing, I want you to discuss with your friends. There are a few points given below and you may use these in your composition. Thank you.